I went to the one and Newman came up to me. I'm ready close. for it. Right here, real quick, this is a great story. No. I don't know yet. You played with the uh, initial weapons? Yeah, we played, you know. Yeah, DMX. I was at his house before he passed away. I beat him. My, I beat him. My, DMX, I, I, the most famous rapper in the world. I got a great story. I got a great story on He's DMX. Gone. I walk in and there's every. Man, I'm Wait lost on this deal. Okay. See, I think y'all are ahead of me on this. Oh, okay, so here's what happened. And we make eye contact, right? Here's what Paul Newman does. This is the kind of guy he is. Let's talk. Yeah, but, but I didn't think we were supposed to look at the camera. Are you set? Well, no. Who's talking? You and are. Me. Hello, I'm Mike Siegel, and welcome to the first ever podcast show from the World Team Billiards. I hope I got that right. So, I'm here today with Reed Fierce to my left, Kim Davenport to my right. We have a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about. This is all new to us, so hopefully it looks good to you. First question is, why are we doing this, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good question, Mike. Well, I'll tell you why we're doing this is because the Pro Bears Tour has so many exciting things that we're getting ready to uh, get involved in. And we've just done our uh, first show with the World Team Billiards, which World Team Billiards started back in 91, and it was just a, a, a great uh, event. It was team play, anywhere from uh, five to seven to eight players on each team, and we had Team Mexico, we had Team Hawaii, and Team Hawaii sounds funny because it is, it is, you know, part like of the United part States. Of, part right? of they, the wanted United their, States. they wanted their own team. Yeah, and, and, and we had, you know, Team Germany, and, and we had uh, Team Wells, I believe, Team uh, Canada. So we had eight or nine teams, Team Philippines, which Team America and the Team Philippines were the two dominant teams. Uh, we had gotten beaten a couple of times with not playing them, but it was still, we, we were the two dominant teams. Yes, and now Reed. Okay, now you, I only played in a few of them myself. Now you play. How many did you play in the the, the World Team Billiards? I played in one event in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, it was really, really exciting. Really great format. A uh, lot of pressure because you're on a team with you know the other guys and. I was on your team, actually. Team America. I have a bad memory. So Team America. Who are we playing then? Other American. Teams. Another American team. You yes. remember who they were? Well, I can't remember. It was like it's four of them. It was like four different teams. And, uh, yeah, it was like you were a captain of one. Uh, Alan Hopkins was a captain. Uh, I can't remember the other. I think Buddy, maybe Rimpy. Now, we, okay, we led with the world team billiards. Now, we have from, uh, hundreds of hours of footage with the great, in my opinion, the greatest players that ever lived in the greatest era in pool, which was in the early 90s up, I think, till 97. However, we did choose this particular team, which I know has not been aired yet, the World Team Billiards of Team America versus World All-Stars. And I do have the names. They had guys like, you know, Buddy Hall, Earl Strickland, Kim. You were, of course, you only appeared a few times. Yeah, I get to shoot <laughs> twice, I think. Yeah, so nice. people are going to see, people are going to see, and what I like about that is the 20-minute uh, segments. There's a shot clock. Of course, now the next match I think is even more exciting. That's where I play Johnny Archer in the semifinals. You know, the old man then coming with the new cocky guy. And I don't want to tell you what happened, but it was exciting. So wh wh what about your matches? My match, uh, I played Buddy Hall uh, in 1994, I believe it was, in the finals in uh, Owensboro, Kentucky. And it was... Uh, it was a great match for me because I, I had been in a drought for, I don't know, I think about two and a half years I hadn't won on tour. And man, I was really, really hungry to win. And I was able to pull that match off. And actually, I didn't even know it, but, uh, well, I knew when I did it, but I guess I jumped on the table and <laughs> threw my cue up in the air. And, uh, you know. and I rem I've, I've heard that story many times, even though I've never seen it. But now we happen to skip over you played your greatest match of all times. Now, I'm going to set the stage. It was you. Now, how long have you been playing on tour at that time? At that point, that? I started in 1994. And this match was? 95. Five. So I you... just won the Dallas Open in 94, and then I turn around and uh, go up against Effort and 
1995. Yeah, so, so you are now playing, arguably at that time, probably the greatest player. He played in the U.S. Open four times. He only won a, well, I'm not going to say what happened, okay? But you guys play, well, I think people let the cat out of the bag. You barbecued him, if I remember <laughs> correctly. And that, tell us about something that happened. Now, this is something that people don't realize. I think the score was 6 6, I believe. That's right. It what was happened? A, well, the score was 6 6. Uh, he breaks the balls and uh, he doesn't make anything. I run out, I break and run out, and I make it 8 6. From there, I go over, sit down, I look up. And he's gone. <laughs> I'm like, we're, you know, so it went on for like 20 minutes and we can't find Efren. Ended up finding out later, he went to his hotel room. Nice. And, he wanted to take a vacation, in other words, after he was well, losing. Well, I throat. don't know. I think somebody put him up to going to his room to maybe stall me out. But you know what? It didn't do any good because I roasted him. <laughs> you always final score of that. I ended up beating him. Uh, he never won another game for him. He broke the balls at six. He 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 never pocketed another yeah, ball. So beat eleven six. So racist in those days, racist to eleven. So would you say that was probably your biggest, your biggest tournament? Obviously, right, yes. yes. Uh, winning the U.S. Open was. Uh, it's the greatest tournament, you know, to me. Uh, and I have fortunate enough to win it, so yeah. Oh, you don't know, have to sound so humble. All right, now well, let's well, go back to. No, yeah. Why didn't I hear about this? If I was playing a guy and it was 8-6 my favorite and I was getting ready to break and he took off on me, I'd be chasing the guy. I'd be calling the referee over. I What's did. going on? I did, call the, I did call the referee over. They didn't do anything about it. I thought That's unbelievable. I was even, even the, some of the fans were saying, hey, it should be forfeited, this, that, and other. And what I did was I didn't do anything. I went and sat down and I talked to my wife and because I, I knew it was a stall move. Wow. Now, me, okay. Great match, okay, I don't want to have a big debate here. But, well, no, that to me, that was a tremendous feat. Reyes was obviously the favorite. You're like an up and comer. Even though you didn't want an event, you really hadn't proven yourself. Reyes had proven himself. So, you know, obviously he was the favorite and for you to beat him, I think was a tremendous accomplishment. Yeah, that's sure right, let's was, give him a man. clap. So remember me for dinner then. Okay, so it. now, now we come up to, for me, I'm watching Ephraim Reyes playing Earl Strickland in the 97 finals of the U.S. Oh, now, I don't even know, I don't even know what happened. I can't remember what happened. Should we say who won that? I'm looking at the producer. He has well, no clue what's going well, on. Well, I can tell you what happened on that match. Uh, what happened? Uh, it, it was a little, a little touchy for Ephraim. Uh, he had just gotten beat. Uh, in the U.S. Open in 96 finals, and he got beaten in the U.S. Open in 95 finals, and now he's in the U.S. Open finals in 97. And that's, Earl that's an amazing beat him feat. 11 to 3. Earl <laughs> played perfect. You couldn't believe it. Uh, I mean, as great as players Ephraim was, he played in four U.S. Opens and only won one. And it, he won the one in 94, and he had lost, you know, was in the finals four years in a row in the U.S. Open. That, that's a great feat just to do that. But I'm sure that he would uh, love to just take maybe one of those two titles instead of just, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but Earl, you know, look, I'm not tooting my own horn, but, uh, you know, Buddy and Earl, for me, were the two toughest guys. Buddy beat me more in the finals than any other player. And you know Mr. N. We'll yeah, talk Mr. about that N. later. In the finals, I was almost unbeatable. And well, I buddy, beat you once. You beat me once. Yeah. I, I said That's almost what, unbeatable. Okay, almost. <laughs> You're lucky that I wasn't, that you didn't play a little longer, because I would have got you. I promise you I would have. <laughs> That's why I quit when you came out. I said, I'm done. <laughs> so, so, but here's the thing. Earl was another guy. I mean, Buddy was tough for me, but Earl had that, he had this ability to, you think you had him, okay? And all of a sudden, you turn around and you're losing. I mean, he just, he had that fast strike thing that was unbelievable. But how about this match? Now, there's a name there, and what happened here? Davenport 95 Pro Tour Championship versus Johnny Archer. Yeah, semifinals of that match. Uh, and I was playing really, really good too, and uh, we lagged, and uh, next thing I know, it's nine to two, Johnny Archer. <laughs> I've, I've missed Hard a couple. To I've, yeah. Race well, to 11, right? Yeah, race, race to 11. 11. I've missed a couple of balls now because I was nervous being defending champion and all that. And it's like, okay, I, I have to settle down. So I, I settled down a little bit. And then next thing I look up, it's 10 4, his favorite. Wow. So I made up a couple of games, but so did he. And uh, from there, uh, 
I don't know if he pocketed another ball. I ran quite a few racks and uh, wind up winning that match. And, and it's uh, still uh, the greatest comeback ever televised. Yeah, and people are going to get to see. Now, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, they have no idea what they're in for because I've seen the matches today, and these guys, you know, they play okay. I'm not going to say they don't play bad. But the players in that era, in the 90s, you had the greatest players and a slew of great players. You know, the thing that they're going to watch with World Team Billiards, you're seeing eight guys, and there's probably 20 world championships, and Laurie John amongst that group, right? Yep. So. They're in for a big treat anyway. That's, that's my point. So uh, let's, let's look at this. What was the World Team Billiards? That was kind of designed around the Ryder Cup, right? Yeah, it, it was uh, Ryder Cup style. And it, uh, what, a, what an idea. I mean, you know, come from the World Billiard Federation and just went right into World Team Billiards, you know. And you know, like I said, trying to get all these teams. Because team play, to me, uh, if you watch the Ryder Cup nowadays in golf, it's humongous. Right. And we were on the right track there to... Uh, to do, to do the world team players in, because everybody plays on a team. You know, you go to Vegas, all the teams, you know, it's all team, and team play is great. Now, I remember one time we were playing, and uh, you know, I'm going back 30 years, so I believe it might have been Team Germany, and I, got, I had gotten a translator, but I asked the players on, on my team, and then I had some of the uh, uh, people that spoke German ask those players, what's the most pressure they've ever felt? And uh, I think there were six guys on the team at that time. So 11 out of the 12 players yeah, all, felt, yeah, that, tremendous all, pressure. all said that there was more pressure in team play than anything, and, and one of those players were lying. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, here's the thing, though. you got to remember, number one, you're representing your country in the team, World Team Billiards. You only shoot once every five or six times a round, and let's say you get up to the table and you don't have a duck. You have some real tough shot that you would feel pressure if you were going back and forth, right? Oh, yeah, and, and you know, Reed, too, when you're playing that, it's just like unbelievable pressure because you're sitting there and you got your team mates over there and they're watching and they're in full and intense. And it's not just you, you're feeling the pressure uh, of your country and your teammates. That's why it's hard to yeah, play right. team pool. Very, a lot of heat. very difficult. So if you take the team, now it just turns out, I was doing a little research and we were debating on um, celebrities that love the team play. It just turns out I, you know, I was around and, you know, I met a, a lot of celebrities just because who I was happened to be in the right place at the right time. ESPN had just started. This was on all that. However, we all have our own little thing. So I'm going to ask you now you have met celebrities. Oh, right? yeah. Now, where do you live? I live in uh, Madison, Mississippi. That's like another country. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just north of Jackson, Mississippi. So, okay. So, who have you met, like some of the ones that stick out, that not only are celebrities, but play pool, right? Well, I can tell a story. Uh, DMX, the uh, rapper, movie star, uh, came to the pool room where I was playing at the time in early 2000. And um, he came in and wanted to play somebody some pool. Well, he asked one person to play, and the guy didn't act like really? he didn't want to DMX. play. So I saw him, and I knew he, he just didn't look right. I didn't, I didn't recognize him. So the next thing I know, I said, hey, look, you want to play some? So next thing you know, we're playing 1,000 a game. Really? Yeah, then next thing we know, I get him 5,000 loser. Wow. So he wants to play now for 5,000 a game. Wow. So we're playing one game. He said he wanted to play one game of eight ball for 5,000. So we play one game of eight ball for the 5,000. And I won, of course, and beat him at 10. And the only reason I didn't win more money off of him was because he had a guy with him that – Told him, no, no, no. Yeah, right. They, he comes play. with an entourage. I was he had a whole entourage of guys oh, around yeah. the table with him while we were playing. And it was kind of a little bit scary. And as I was shooting, I told a couple of them, they had the trench coats and all this, you know, his body's guard for him. I told him, I said, look, get back, get back. I'm trying to shoot here. I, I was not intimidated at all because I've been all over the world playing and gambling and all kind of, you know, weird situations. I wouldn't call them bad situations, but, you know, different where it could be a little funny. It didn't scare me though. You know, I've I've been in that spot before, but it was kind of so cool. you go out in the parking lot. Then you got to worry. Well, that's right. So, that's Jim, right. Well, go ahead. No, no, I was not. I was going to ask you something. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you. Uh, you had played with quite a few celebrities, and you had quite a uh, honor uh, bestowed upon you in 1997 uh, at the Color of Money, the filming. You were a part of that. Can you 
Yeah, yeah actually, that was 87. <laughs> what did I say? 97. That's well, all right. What year is it now? Yeah, I, don't right. I don't know. <laughs> but no, well, you know, the, the thing is, I have, like, I'd waste five hours of tape minimum, but I was picked. Now, the funny part is that Bob Mucci, I'll mention these guys, and David Howard, and, uh, and Jim Rempe, and Mike Massey, and a bunch of these guys went to New York and auditioned for the part of you know, being in the part and technical advisor. They offered to do it all for free. So I uh, was at the US Open and I saw everybody going around this lady who was, who was Barbara Dafina. She is Marty Scorsese's wife, let's still use that name. Anyway, I cut in and I was thinking I want to be technical advisor, right? They said they didn't have a technical advisor, so I fed her some line that I did another movie, The Baltimore, which we'll talk about later. Well, well, wouldn't you be perfect for it? You're left-handed, so is Tom Cruise. Well, at, yeah, but at that point, none of that would even come out yet. Okay, so at that particular time, all of that stuff didn't matter. I go up there, and this is a true story. So about a month later, I win the world tournament uh, straight pool in November. And about two weeks later, I get a call, and it's the movie production. And I lived in Maryland, and they said, come on up to New York. They wanted me to show Tom Cruise some shots. I went, okay. So I go up there, go in this building, go to the top floor, open it up, and there's a pool table right there. Okay, and all of a sudden I look, and who's playing? Paul Newman. Paul Newman's playing pool. That. I'm speechless. My lips, I couldn't even open them. You had to be real nervous. Oh, it was incredible. And then Tom Cruise was sitting off to the side. So Newman right away says, hey, Mike, congratulations on winning the world tournament. I said, okay, thanks. He says, here, put your cue together. Let, let's hit a few balls, right? So I went, all right. So we're playing. And every time he would ask me a question about pool, English, this, that, he kept looking over at Tom Cruise, smiling like, eh, this guy knows what he's talking about. So I'm catching that out of the corner of my eye. So then Newman goes, he goes, uh, I'm having trouble with my break in nine ball. Can you help me? I went, all right. So I rack him up. I said, let me see a break. He breaks. I rack him up. I go, let me see a break again. He does that. So this time I give him two pointers on what to do. He breaks and the nine goes in, automatic win. He yells at the end of the room. There was a big curtain. Marty Scorsese, the cinematographer, and Richard Price, who actually wrote The Color of Money, they were back there and Newman yells out, put him on the payroll. <laughs> that's a true story. So go ahead, Kim. That, you know, that's a good I know one. you're from California, and you've been around, and you, I, you've had to been around a bunch of famous people. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, the color of money, uh, I was invited to uh, the premiere of the color of money in uh, uh, Hollywood. Keith McCready, you know, was Grady Seasons. He was playing Tom Cruise yeah. for all that money. And uh, quick sidebar: I actually read for that part, but Marty you? said you don't look right. Keith is way better, seedier looking. So I'm yeah, glad. Keith Keith played a good part. He, <laughs> he was funny. Well, but know. anyway, uh, the, the limo zine picked us up. Me and uh, Keith McCready and my wife and, and a couple. And I'll never forget this. I I, I might not even be here right now uh, if I would have done what I wanted to do. So the limo driver. I remember him saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him the full Hollywood treatment. So my wife's getting out and he's helping her and he puts his hand on my wife's rear end and I about just jumped what? out of that the, the seat. Driver did the that? driver did that, the red carpet's right there and I about exploded. I, I mean, I looked at him like, well, you, anyway, we, so we start walking up the red carpet. The things are flashing, boom, boom, boom. I'm smiling, but the pictures are for Keith, you know. So we get in Keith, there, right? Keith, yeah, Keith Reynolds. Reynolds. So listen to this. So we get in there, and we're all waiting. I mean, you're movie stars all around everywhere. So we're waiting, and Keith says, well, I'm waiting for Tom. You know how Keith was. I'm waiting for Tom. So Tom Cruise shows up about 10 minutes later, and Keith yells out, Tom, where have you been? Everybody's been waiting for you. I mean, about 20 people started laughing. It was hilarious. And then Tom didn't pay much attention to him. And then we went in to watch the movie, and went over to Chasen's and we did our exhibition. And uh, oh, it, did it an was exhibition? pretty, we did an exhibition at the Chasen's restaurant. Oh, really? Which was a very famous place. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. You know, it's really amazing because, you know, my son, you can't see him, he's sitting off to the side. He hears all these stories about the travel, the meeting the people. The money isn't quite there, but it's an exciting lifestyle. And uh, I always think, who is the best celebrity Player. Who do you think is the best celebrity pool player, well, or was? Let, 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 let's put it that way. Well, I know that uh, back in the day, and I never seen him play, but Peter Falk used to play pretty good pool. I heard. Uh, but then you mentioned Jackie Gleason from right. That's Jackie, Gleason. Say Jackie yeah. Gleason. Yeah, Jackie Gleason. Uh, and 
Mark Cavalier, the golfer, I, I've yeah. never seen him exactly play, but someone told me he plays really well. Well, Mac Davis, that's funny you mentioned that. We were at Bel Air doing an exhibition, uh, and, and Mac Davis, we had the table set up, and Mac Davis set the shot. I'm going to shoot the shot that Willie Moscone made. And I said, no, Mac, it's up there. Mac says, listen, leave it there. I said, okay. And we, just, we just played 18 holes together, me and him. So he hits five rails, comes around just like Moscone, and makes the ball. He says, see, Kim? <laughs> Dropped the cue and went up. Well, I was in L.A., so, of course, now I was very lucky through a friend of mine in New York, this place called the Players Club. This friend of mine, Rusty Miller, he used to love me. He always bought me in a Calcutta, in the World Straight Pool. He'd sit up in the balcony at the Roosevelt and the Biltmore Hotels. Those were really big tournaments in those days. And all kinds of celebrities would show up. And across the street, they had a place which is still now going, the Players Club. That's where all the celebrities hang out like a pool room, but they don't have to be bothered by us, the normal people, you know? So who, who's in there? I run into Paul Sorvino, who is a top player, mm -hmm. Jerry Orbach. They also play well. But the one that got me in L.A. on a tough table, you know, Ernesto Dominguez made the pockets. Remember the Hollywood Village? Yeah, how tight they were? Yeah, tight. Well, somebody said, no, I didn't know who this guy was really at that time. It's like 12, 13 years ago, Joe Rogan. Okay, so he comes up to me, he goes, uh, he was with Max Everly, a good friend of his, and he goes, uh, here, I'll play a few games. I'm thinking, and then Max says, hey, this guy's like a celebrity to box. So, you know, then I did, he was doing the ring. He did Fear Factor, I believe. So I'm going, all right, all right. So, you know, I put my cue together. I'm, we break, we play 10 ball. I make one or two balls, and I miss the three on, or the four on purpose to see what he's got. He ran out on me. I mean, it surprised me. Uh, of course, that's the last game he ever won, but it surprised me. <laughs> he played with a Southwest, like a $30,000 oh. cue. I mean, the guy, and if you, we're now on our website, which I don't think we have mentioned, probilliardstour.com, we have many stories, plus you're going to see the Joe Rogan bit. He mentions pool twice. He loves pool. Hopefully somewhere down the road we get him on this show. That would be very exciting. But don't forget, we have a lot of items. We have hats and shirts memorabilia. Uh, I don't want to get into these other items now. You know, I'm not, I don't know if it's my place with the, the NFTs and all these other things. We're going to do that later on. Uh, but we're doing play to earn. We're doing a lot of creative new things in pool that's going to be very exciting for not only the top players, but also just the average player gets to play guys like Ephraim Reyes, myself, Kim, and Reed uh, virtually. So that will be very exciting. Just keep looking at our website. You're going to see that. You also can uh, look on our all, any, all, all major uh, streaming platforms or, uh, and pick that up there too. And they are? Which ones are they? It Always check the website, okay? We want the traffic. Which is? Which is ProBillionsTour.com. Pro dot com. It should be right here. I argued it, but they didn't do it, so there you go. <laughs> All right, so I think we're done. And what's the name of this show again? What is this? The name we of this? We never did mention it. We never mentioned Straight the name pool. of the show, Straight Pool. Which Let's I, just say ProBillionsTour.com at the same time. Ready? Yeah, yeah. ready? Oh, one, two, three. ProBillionsTour.com. <laughs> like Ghostbusters. We're here to believe oh, you. Oh, my God. That was pretty good for that, <laughs> I, I thought. Huh? I, I thought don't that was know. good. No? Well, yeah, because we, I mean, are you because wanna, we had to I talk mean, you, about you're something. Not being no, we know out, all right? about this, no. okay, but we okay, had okay. to Carry explain you. something well, I, that we wouldn't be talking yeah, about yeah, when we were just talking. Pool. Can't, I can't. I mean, I, no, no, I can I, get that, in a different area. That's my job. Is there any way? I can't talk about. Is there any way? No, that's my job. Someone has to gambling in. Listen, question. No, but all the stuff in pool. Any way when we're doing all this? Every show, every thought, all welcome down. I thought you did good. Actual essential things. That the you back, want in you know, there? Is there any I think way for the first one, I think it went incredible. I thought it went pretty good. We didn't good. step on each when other. When we're doing, no. right? What oh. do you guys think, Gary?